Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is uh, Friday, March 16th. And uh, as always, we're doing the weekly look back at uh, some eBay auction results. It was a pretty good week. There were some nice things turned up. Um, uh, a, a couple of things turned up, and they, they weren't even dated very well. They weren't dated at all, and they, they're doing extremely well, and we'll get into that. And uh, a couple of things I wanted to mention. Um, we posted this video yesterday on uh, some of the Christie sales and Sotheby's sales that are coming up uh, next week. This one showing here is on the 22nd. Um, and uh, there'll be uh, uh, other sales through Bonhams and, and everyone else uh, coming along. It's, it's some really exciting things coming up. So we're gonna we're gonna pay close attention. And we'll we'll cover the results after it's all over. All right. So uh, let's get started. Uh, the first thing I wanted to point out was this. This is a uh, Hess uh, uh, Fine Art uh, is a, is a pretty big seller on eBay in all categories of antiques. And they evidently got a hold of uh, some very fine, uh, mostly Kang Shi period and 18th century blue and white uh, porcelain from a collection that was uh, apparently formed in France. Uh, they're quite reputable sellers, so I don't have any reason to, to doubt the uh, provenance they're showing. And they had this, a very nice brush pot. This is a very attractive brush pot. And it was getting virtually no attention because the description was so odd. But at any rate, this is it. And it brought $3,102, but it just says antique Chinese figural medallion brush pot with blue and white um, in a French collection. That's all it said. Uh, but it, it got, it's got its traction, and uh, it did very well, $3,102, all right? And then they have had this up, a nice looking. This is a hot food pot. Uh, we're very well done. Um, they had some trouble explaining what these holes were on the side, and those of you who have seen these before know exactly what those holes are. There would be sort of a, usually a Rui head shaped uh, handle uh, made out of bronze uh, stuck through here, one on each side. All right, and here's the bottom of it. Nice looking pot. It looks Kung Shi to me. And uh, it did fine. It brought $5,778. I do think it might have done a bit better had they given a more accurate description. Uh, we did have them in the newsletter last week uh, because they, we thought they were quite nice. And there's other pieces in this lot still coming up. And then there was this, a nice looking uh, 19th century turquoise, they call these turquoise matrix uh, snuff bottles. Nicely carved, this is a good old one. Had lots of uh, grunge on it and whatnot, but a nice old pot. Still had the original uh, spoon, which is rather unusual. And uh, if you're a snuff bottle collector, you probably noticed this. It did pretty well. It brought $362, uh, not a bad price at all, but a very interesting little uh, little snuff bottle. All right. And then there was this, the uh, Cloisonne Elephant. Um, a birdie told me that this uh, went through an auction in uh, in the uh, in Ireland or, or the British Isles uh, a few months ago, and uh, ended up here. He, the fellow was in attendance at the sale, and uh, here's the uh, elephant, and it did really well. Um, Cloisonne elephants are very popular, and this is a good-looking uh, latter 19th century example, and it brought $7,270. Uh, pretty good price for that. I was a little surprised by that. It seems a little high to me, but uh, people get excited about elephants. They love elephants. And uh, then there was this. Uh, this was a very nice Chinese export uh, relief worked uh, vase. Uh, they, they made these in garniture sets often. Uh, had a nice little uh, boy figure on the top. Appeared to be in excellent condition. And uh, it did just fine. It brought $2,133. This was from a, a seller, Ancient Arts, who we close, pay close attention to. He's in the Netherlands. He gets excellent things. He has a good eye. And uh, um, he always uses fruit, interestingly, to show scale of his things, which I kind of like. I think that's, that's a nice thing. And uh, then there was this also from that same seller. It was this really nice early uh, 18th century pot beautifully done, done somewhat in the Ming style in the uh, um, Jai Jing and early Wan Li period. They, this form, this particular shape became quite popular, but this is a uh, 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 later example. And uh, it did great, it brought $1,450 with a break. It had some damage to it. And uh, it still did just fine because it's a, a very desirable form. And it was beautifully painted. The, 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 the cobalt on it was really skillfully applied. Nice even coloring. Sometimes you know age, you know a little damage can be made up, made up 
uh, if it's uh, well done. And this particular little jar was very well done. And so was this. This was nice looking. This was also probably Kangxi, early 18th century anyway. Um, it has almost a transitional period uh, uh, coloration to it and the way it's done with the figures. It's missing its cover. It originally had a lid to it, uh, but a, a nice looking piece. Here's the bottom of it. Um, there's the foot rim, nice and clean, and uh, there's a side shot of it. And again, had these holes in it where the uh, handles would have gone. It's a food pot, obviously. And you see this nice, hard, uh, clean, very pure uh, paste on the inside, um, which is pretty typical of early 18th century porcelain. It's very well done. And it did fine. It brought $3,716. And uh, uh, Gunnar Jacobson over in Sweden got this put it up. Uh, he also gets good things. We've been following Gunner now for, I don't know, a few, three years, four years on here. He gets nice objects. And uh, then there was this. This was, this was an interesting, interesting uh, an, a dealer that posts a lot of stuff on, on the web put this up. And he listed this as 18th or 19th century. And, I, and anybody that's been collecting for a while knows that this probably wasn't 18th or 19th century, but probably late 19th uh, in, instead, but in very nice quality. And uh, here's a, a shot of the bottom, uh, very typical late 19th century base to it. Um, here's some more of it, okay. But it's a, a good quality item, and uh, it did fine. It brought $2,405. This for an 18th century one, it would have brought a lot more. All right, so I think everybody pretty quickly, I don't think he was being duplicitous. I just think he was an error on his, on his uh, estimation of age. And uh, then there was this, this nice gin uh, black glaze, tamuku glaze with iron, uh, decorated bottle. This was a nice thing, uh, and I like the uh, the way the neck was formed and well swollen. Nice big body on it. Good looking foot rim on it. That's what it should look like. All right, you can see you know little bits of wear and so forth as you often see on these, and it did just fine. It brought forty two hundred and forty six dollars, and uh, he dated it. This was Egmont Horn. He dated it as being Jin to Yan Dynasty, which is which is sort of a safe, very safe range to uh, to date it. And it was a nice pot. It's a nice looking pot. And I like the decorations. Nicely done. And then there was this brush pot. This was sort of an interesting brush pot. It had been retrofitted with bronze, with a bronze base or a metal base and a metal top. I think it might have been turned into a humidor or something. But the carving on it, this three relief carve, a very three dimensional carving with this bamboo forest with monkeys, I thought was absolutely charming. Um, I liked this a lot. I thought this was very attractive. Um, there's a, a side shot of it. The carving on it's excellent. It's a 19th century pot. And uh, you can see how they, it uh, looks like they scored it out a little bit to fit the top on there. Um, but that's okay. Nice looking piece. And there's the metal objects coming off of it. They, somebody took it apart for the photography. But beautifully carved and, 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 and good color. Nice color on this. And uh, I, it's rather unusual with the bamboo trees. At any rate, it, it did fine. It brought $610. But I think that was somewhat of a bargain. That was also from Egmont Horn. And then on to this, this very attractive 18th century uh, tea, uh, uh, teapot. Uh, excellently decorated, very nice spacing, lots of negative space. It's so important. Sometimes they get overcrowded. Uh, this was a nice looking pot. There it is up close. Had a minor firing blemish here something that was in the paste, but overall a good looking teapot. And uh, there's the bottom of it, early one. And um, how'd it do? It brought uh, $556. That is not a, a particularly unreasonable purchase for that. There's a fine piece of porcelain. And the uh, scene on it I thought was quite artistically done. Uh, I like that. And uh, why we put it in the newsletter? Because I liked it, I guess. All right. And uh, this was a, a Kung Shi plate that went up. This thing had hairlines in it and so forth, but very attractively painted with, and, uh, with the yellow birds flittering around on the sides and the uh, apple blossoms in the center, and then the rim done with the flowers. Here's the back of it. And this was about a 15 inch plate. It was a good sized plate. There's the hairline at the bottom. You can see it right there. And uh, despite the hairline, it did just fine. It brought $599, which is, which is pretty good. Um, there, there seems to be a little bit of growing tolerance in some areas for certain pieces of ceramics if they have a tiny bit of damage. And hairlines on the back aren't quite what they used to be. Restorations are still a big problem, but, but a hairline, people seem to be willing to forgive a little bit. 
And then there was this. This was kind of a confusing uh, listing. Uh, this was actually just for two bowls. Uh, some people thought it was for four bowls. It was for two. The listing did say a pair, uh, but here they are, nice looking Wan Lee examples. And uh, the pair did pretty well. It brought $613. Um, and this is from uh, Migulari, is an, another seller we've come across uh, about a year ago. They were just sort of getting started a year and a half ago, maybe. And uh, they, they seem to consistently find things, and we consistently put them on the, uh, on the newsletter uh, page. And then there was this. This was a nice uh, solid on ground for Mill Rose, mid-19th century uh, vase, quite well uh, decorated, nice handles on it. Uh, and a little, in case you saw this listing, in case you were confused, because I was a little confused by it. Here he has the vase, here's the detail of it, and then he has this weird detail thrown in, which is to another vase. And then the second photo over, he's got another vase. All right, that's the last time I think it appears. Um, so the rest of the pictures were all for the Celadon piece, but it was a little bit confusing that he included the second vase. I think it was a mistake. I think when he was selecting his images, it had a similar shape and he wasn't paying attention and threw this on. So at any rate, it brought $892, which is a pretty good price for that. That's a, I'm trying to think how big this was. Hold on. I think it was around 17 or 18 inches. We'll scroll down quick just to make sure. Got a lot of pictures. Wow. Okay, there it is. Uh, description, 42 centimeters. Yeah, okay. All right. And then there was the Harado wine pot. This was a nice piece of Harado, late 19th century. And often you see these white uh, Harado pots, and the dragon is in the same color as the pot itself. So the whole piece typically is of a cream color. And it's rather nice to see it with this light blue um, uh, highlighting the, uh, the, the large dragon, which formed the handle and the spout, and then a little baby dragon on the lid. I thought this was a very nice piece of Harado. It was rather fine, too. Here's the bottom of it. Very fine quality, as all Harado is. Um, here you have the dragon. He still had his tongue, all right? And there was a minor, minor fleck on the end of the tail up here on the top of the tail. You can see where it nicked off a little bit, but pretty minor. And uh, this did just great. It brought $1,266. It was a, a nice looking. I like Harado. I like Japanese porcelain. Um, and it's a good thing to collect right now if you, if you like Japanese porcelain because it's relatively very inexpensive compared to Chinese. It's outstanding quality. And then there was this hand warmer. Um, they had put it up as Ch uh, Chinese. I think it's probably a Japanese one, uh, just my opinion. The dragon looks a bit Chinese, but the rest of it looks Japanese to me. And, uh, but very nice quality. Um, here it is, the bottom of it. Here's the top. But this opening reminds me always of Japanese uh, pieces. And uh, they're, they're pretty close sometimes. Sometimes it's very hard to tell it's between a Japanese hand warmer and a Chinese one. And uh, this was a pretty good buy, $460. Uh, $460. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty good purchase uh, right there. A nice old surface, nice patina. Uh, with, you know, metalworks, you're always paying, you always want to pay a premium to get good patina. Okay. And that was it for this week. That was, those were sort of the highlights. And now we're going to take a look at some of the things that are closing um, this weekend, tomorrow, Sunday, and into next week. And there's some good things coming up. Um, first thing I wanted to mention was this. This plate turned up over, over in the uh, Netherlands in, in an auction. And if you watch these videos, you'll remember uh, just a week or two ago, we had a very similar plate, not identical, but very similar, from uh, KB Antiques here in the U.S. had one. Um, and uh, he, he dated it as, as uh, late Young Chen, early Chin Lung, around 1740. This particular, I didn't. I thought he was being too pessimistic about the age. I thought it was a Kang Shi plate, and uh, this this seller put it has it up as Kang Shi, and it's up to five hundred and fifty dollars. And here's the one that sold um, a couple of weeks ago. As you can see, they're nearly identical. Uh, it's, it's, it's a pattern that was produced uh, with these immortals running around the rim and so forth. And that one, just so you know, brought $941. So the other one is up to $550. So um, uh, you, now you have some idea of what it's worth, all right, if you, in case you took a look and you weren't sure. All right, it's got, maybe got a ways to go yet because I didn't think 900 was unreasonable for it. And then there's this. It's pretty nice looking. I kind of thought this was good. It, probably 18th century Blanc de Chine dragon uh, uh, wine ewer, wine with, made it with chimera handles and uh, a chimera spout and, uh, and a little, little baby dragon on the top. Uh, very attractive looking. Here's a picture of the bottom. Nice looking age there, some crackle and so forth. 
good hard dense thick paste on the lid and uh, currently it's up to $350 and it closes on Sunday all right if you like wine yours that's a pretty nice one and uh, speaking of Japanese things this is a, a, a pretty attractive uh, circa 1680 um, Japanese Arita dish this is a very old dish and, and very nicely done here's a picture of the back with this X pattern uh, spurs and this very distinctive bluish glaze. Um, it's got a couple of hairlines here and here. Uh, it's very common. The, a lot of these Japanese pieces get hairlines um, um, over time and uh, so forth. But here's the back of it. As you can see, there's some crackular around here that helped antagonize those hairlines. Uh, but right now it's up to just $174 US. It's got one bid and two days to go. If you're a Japanese uh, porcelain collector, this is a pretty, if you'll, you know right away what it is. It's a pretty good, pretty good early piece. All right. And, um, and then you have this. This is also part of that lot from Hess Auctions. This is, these haven't closed yet. For some reason, they staggered them. They had some closed this week, and now they're having some closed in a few days. This was, is one of them. It's a very attractive Kangxi uh, uh, incense burner. Love the pine trees and so forth. And uh, here's a shot of the bottom. There's a firing flaw, a slight firing flaw on the bottom. That's not a, a, a crack, a damage from a crack that happened during the making. And that's the foot rim. You want to see that nice creamy white foot rim. And uh, here's the back of it with the birds. Excuse me, we have a truck coming in, it sounds like, down the street. Uh, and uh, let's see how that's doing. It's up to 720 and it closes tomorrow, Saturday, all right, the uh, 17th of March. And they also have this up, pretty nice looking vase with deer and so forth on it. Also Kung Shi from what I can see. Uh, their, their pictures are very white. I don't know how, quite how they do that. There, is, there were some bits of uh, repair to the foot and whatnot on this. You want to check it out. Uh, there's traces of glue and something happened down in here. Um, and the uh, vase had been lamped at one point, but apparently uh, they don't show that it had been drilled. So assume it might, may have been drilled. All right, and that's up to $275. And then you have this. This is Qing period has these up. These are very attractive pair of uh, gilt and cobalt blue ground uh, vases with Kung Shi marks. And he rather conservatively uh, is dating them as 19th century. Um, from what I can see, they could be certainly be 18th century based on the quality of the work and so forth. They're really beautifully done. And uh, they're up to $4,850. And they do have a reserve on them, but uh, they, I think these are around 10 inches tall. They're good size and appear to be in wonderful condition. And uh, here's a shot of the foot rim of that, that double pair of double gourds. As you can see, that's a, a, that boy, that looks like an 18th century foot to me. Regardless, they're really great quality. And, uh, you know, when in doubt, always buy quality. All right. And that's it for the, uh, for the, for the newsletter this week. And uh, we're going to try and get the uh, try to do something on the bottom sales um, coming up uh, next week. Also, we got thrown off a day because we had another one of those monstrous New England storms, and uh, we left early Monday and we're gone all day Tuesday because we got 20 inches of snow and one, once again had 60 and 70 mile an hour winds here on the island. It was a little wild for for a good part of Tuesday. All uh, right, but uh, we're, we're back at it, and the streets are getting shoveled, and that truck you heard outside is probably hauling snow. All right, so if uh, you haven't signed up yet for us, uh, uh, joined us here on YouTube as a subscriber, please do. And if you no, don't yet get the uh, bitamount.com uh, weekly newsletter uh, notifications every week, come over to the site and sign up for it. There's a spot right on the newsletter page where you can do it. It's free. Just come over and sign up and uh, take part and join the forum. All right. And uh, everybody have a great weekend um, and uh, uh, see what you can find out there in the next week or two. All right. Bye bye. Thank you.